Hello and welcome everyone to another StarCraft 2 England cast. Today I've got a game between Iki as the Red Protoss player and TSL Polt as the Blue Terran player. So these are two really, really high rank players. I'm sure a lot of you will recognise Polt's name from the Intel Extreme Masters final against Stefano. So this is kind of a really, really good, good player. Everyone knows him. He's got a lot of high profile stuff going on at the moment. The map is an alteration of Teldurim Alta. Um, so essentially the same, not many changes or anything like that. So it's not done on the ladder obviously, it is a custom game, but it's still an absolutely great game and I'm really looking forward to cast it. Now um, basically while these two players are starting off, I've got some fantastic news. Um, basically, I've been approached by GameReplays.org and I am now on their staff as an official commentator for StarCraft 2. So I'm going to be profiled on there, a weekly update to all my casts and stuff. And if anyone who doesn't has never actually been to GameReplays.org, then go and check it out. It's a great site, it's got loads of StarCraft replays and from other games as well. And just go and check it out, it's absolutely fantastic. So, I mean, that's just a little bit of information for you guys about what's going on there and I mean if we take a look at what the both players are doing it's all pretty standard stuff no crazy shenanigans going on as of yet and I mean just to give you a bit of information about the players I mean both of them are very very high up Pult plays highly in tournaments as I said um, Iki I don't know that much about Iki um, but obviously if he's playing Polt he is a good player because I mean Polt is one of the best at the moment so it'll be interesting to see how these two do fare up. This map is more su suited to a macro game just because it's got such a long distance between. These four Zelnaga watchtowers are absolutely brilliant in order to get vision, you can get complete vision of the map, all entrances from there. Um, and that's absolutely great because it means that nothing really catches you by surprise apart from if you get proxy pylon or a drop which comes around but obviously even drops look at the amount of distance they'd have to travel to get into the base so again it's kind of a more straight up kind of careful positioning there is enough room to send armies like opposite side run bys that sort of stuff so we will be interesting to see what both players do Iki is getting out his cybernetic score he has got one gas at the moment not getting the second gas, so nothing crazy going on there. Polt hasn't yet actually got down a gas at all, so I'd expect to see an expansion out of him pretty quickly. I mean, he's saving up quite a lot, and there we go. There is the command center going down as we speak at his natural, and that is completely safe to do on this map. He's just got such a massive distance for any kind of harassment to come that they'll be well up with a, a good couple of marines there to defend it before any sort of danger. And Iki's just kind of boosting out that warp gate tech, so we may see something there, but getting down his own expansion now as well, only slightly behind Polt so both players are gearing up to get into a more macro orientated game as is suited to this map. The orbital command is down at the main so mules are going to be coming out as you can see. Adding on two more barracks so this is going to be a bio play and that's very very common in TVP just because bio armies do really well and it'll be interesting to see how EQ responds. Obviously there's Colossus, there's High Templar, Storm, just a lot of ways to deal with things and I mean it's a good matchup. I really really like TVP. I think it's a great match to watch and also to play. Now two more gateways are coming down here for Iki so it's going to be three gates. It was a one gate expand going into three gates so very very normal stuff going on pretty much everywhere. These, The second and third barracks is going to be done soon. A bunker out of the front as well so this is going to be easily defended if Iki does put on any kind of pressure. But Again we'll wait and see what happens. Iki is getting down his second gas now and meanwhile that orbital command is getting morphed in straight away for Polt so he'll be getting that really really good income super super quick. Polt getting two gases straight off the bat now so he's going to start getting that gas income because at the moment he's just pumping marines he's going to get a good economy up and really he's just taking a defensive position at the moment not looking to put on any pressure too soon warp gate tech has just finished for Iki now as well so we could be seeing some warp pressure done come in one stalker is going to poke up, but with that bunker there and so many marines, it's not going to happen at all. So, pretty safe. There is this pile on here though, so in comes three more stalkers. Now, four stalkers plus this one here makes five, and five stalkers could potentially poke and prod a bit, and it'll be interesting to see if Iki does. The key thing is Iki doesn't want to lose anything at all here, because at this stage of the game, you want to harass and you don't want to lose stuff. That's basically how you play, and just keep that harassment on to basically try and put your opponent off prevent them from getting that perfect macro, forget, make them forget building units or anything like that. Just any kind of misstep really just helps and some good stalker micro here, pulling back the ones who lose their shields. SCVs are being forced to pull and repair. Now obviously that might not seem like it did any 
damage, but obviously these SCVs were mining for a couple of seconds. And it might seem minor, but minor things like that make a difference. But the first Marauder is now out. Stim is on its way as well. No concussive shells for the Marauder. So, I mean, obviously once Marauders are out, and now in that bunker as well, these Stalkers probably won't be able to do too much more. But they can just keep prodding and poking and forcing more SCVs to be pulled. Meanwhile, EQ just getting more probes. Probes and pylons, probes and pylons. Also getting a Twilight Cancel out just to this front here. So we're probably going to see High Templar out from him very, very quickly. And that's really a great response to this bio army because you can just drop a couple of great storms and do huge damage and obviously then go and win the game. Blink is on its way as well. So Blink on the Stalkers really increases their potential as a unit because obviously you can get better micro. A fantastic scan though will reveal all of Iki's plans to Polt and he can react accordingly. But to be honest, he's in a great spot. He's getting his macro up, he's got a good little ball of units, he's got that bunker there, getting down a factory now as well, probably going to turn that into a stop, just getting that for the starport in order to be able to get out those medevacs, and also getting an engineering base, so we'll see some upgrades coming along soon as well. In terms of Iki, I mean he doesn't actually have a forge or anything yet, so no upgrades on the way as of yet, combat shield is on the way down for Polt as well, Iki just taking out this third base. And I like that, obviously these rocks are annoying, it prevents the third base coming out super super quick. But Iki should be able to take these down pretty quickly, and obviously by doing so, we'll get his third base up pretty quickly as well. Just bring some more units over. Meanwhile, Polt just getting a missile turret out for detection, and I mean, that's a good thing to have, just a little bit of detection. You don't want to get a DT rush in your base, because that can just be a pain. Meanwhile, just... Everything's going pretty standard. The two forges are coming out now for Iki as well. He's also getting out this Templar archive, so we will definitely be seeing um, High Templar. Also kind of boosting out charge for the Zealots to make those Zealots effective against the Bio Army. They're good tank Zealots. They take a lot of damage, and if you get them in range, can do a lot of damage as well. So that's all pretty nice. And as I thought, the Starport is down with the reactor on it, so straight away Pult is going to be getting out quite a few medevacs just to really get everything going. Storm on the way as well now for Iki, just starting off, getting 1-1 one, one upgrade, 1 melee, uh, 1 ground attack and 1 ground armour. Meanwhile, some stalkers are going to poke and prod up, and not going to be able to do anything, there's just so much stuff there, blinking straight away back, doesn't want to lose anything, and really, that's fine. Poking up like that, it gave him scouting information, and also meant that he could do a, put a bit of pressure on. And as long as he doesn't lose anything, nothing wrong with that at all. Meanwhile, Polt is just get halfway through getting his infantry weapons level 1 out, which obviously is essential, but doesn't have any armor upgrades as of yet. And he is actually building his third command center. The third base for Iki is about two-thirds done. And actually here, these stalkers coming up, and there's nothing here to defend. That bunker could get sniped down pretty quickly. I mean, Polt's units are out of position, and that bunker is going to go down, and that was quite a nice win. Only... It's actually going to lose a stalker, so that's a bit of a pain, but to be honest, no problem at all. Iki had a nice little thing. If you go to the Lost tab, pretty similar, so everything's going rather nicely there. These stalkers are going to get scouted because the Marine is there, and they will need to pull back and be very, very careful. You don't want to lose those stalkers, just because Protoss units are more expensive, and you need to keep them alive. So they're going to blink back, just try and get them away. A good stim going off there. Concussive shells isn't done, so one stalker will go down. That second one should just be able to get away, especially with that blink there as well. The third base up for Iki, just keeping a High Templar around, ready to storm. Storm, of course, is now finished. No high, One High Templar here as well, so pretty safe. A good little warp up. That pylon has been cleaned up, so no worries about getting a warp in behind lines. Sorry for the misclick there. And, and this is actually quite a scary little army from Pol. I mean, it's got some medevacs. Quite a few marines. This factory coming over as well just to get some scouting off. But we'll see three more gateways on the way for Iki there. 2-2 two, two on the way. 1-1 one, one is done. Plus one infantry attack done. 4 pole plus two infantry armor is on its way. An orbital command being morphed in as well. Still hasn't moved to go and take that base. And just stimming forward here. Just going to snipe off one gateway, two gateways. They weren't cancelled. So that's a bit of a loss. A huge storm does go off. Moving those marines back. The zealots are charging in. Still no concussive. Oh, concussive shells is now done. So, obviously that's key. That means he Pol does have the option to kite this army quite a bit. And a great position of the factory here. No air units to scout that out. So, really, pol has got great scouting information coming from that factory. And also picked off 300 minerals worth of gateways. Now, the rocks have been cleared. Both gases are being taken. And this third base is going to be going down now for Pol. So, he's in a good spot as well. That plus two is on the way. As, no, plus one armor is actually on the way, plus two weapons on the way. 2-2 two, two is about half done for Iki. Meanwhile, 
He's getting out that robotic facility, getting out cannons, and just is really playing everything super standard. Moving forward, these stalkers, and going to try and chase down this army. I mean, he could blink forward, but he just loses so much, so he needs to keep that blink just in order to get away in situations like that. We'll lose a zealot there. Bit of a bit, little bit of missed micro there, but should be fine. Meanwhile, both players are just pretty much macroing up, and actually, Pold looking like he's gearing up for a drop, and also moving down here to prevent this fourth base coming down for Iki, and that pylon will probably get cancelled, no doubt, but it does give away exactly what Pold is thinking. And now, Iki actually moving his entire army round. Now, this could be a bit dodgy, because this drop is coming in. If it does come in, Iki's army is so far out of position. But, I mean, a good blink forward there, just trying to pick off a couple of medevacs, trying to do a bit of damage. There's a lot of zealots there, but obviously a lot of warpins going in, but this is all on the low ground. All he's got to do is pick up, and that is exactly what he's going to do. Picks up those units and drops them in the main base, and there is literally nothing here. A huge storm does go off, but Iki's army is so far out of position, it's got massive wrong distance. And straight away here, we will see the 2-2 two -two is going to finish, and that was... Very, very lucky timing by Iki there, having to pull all of his probes, going to lose one forge straight away there. And if you actually look, Iki is producing nothing at the moment, and is losing a lot of workers straight away. More medevacs are coming in, they did get hit by feedback from those high templars, so nearly did go down, but I mean, this is a good engagement for Pol. If you look at the supply, it's very much favouring Pol to the moment. Iki is getting that plus three ground armour, meanwhile 2-2 two -two is still on the way for Pol. And, I mean, one medevac will go down, a second medevac going down would be quite big. There we go, some word drop, a big storm goes off as well there. And, I mean, Iki took some damage, but he's now starting to clean up, getting a good wave of warpins in. Actually, the pylon gets sniped, so they all get cancelled. Now, Iki is going to have to retreat, but, I mean, if we take a look at the loss tab, it'll tell a lot more about what is going on. Still, I mean, Pole came off slightly better there by 900, mineral, 900 resources, rather. But it's still not something that's huge. That pylon will get sniped down though, so will that probe. I expect that pylon will get cancelled. I'd hope so, because you don't want to just lose minerals for no reason. But it looks like, no, it isn't going to get cancelled. Now, that was a bit of a misclick. I mean, a uh, train of zealots are coming in. They are just all following the leader. It's a zealot's favourite game to play. They just tag along and just follow the leader. They don't know where they're going, but they're going to blade something to death. Now, if you look here, you will see that it is three bases against three bases. But, I mean... The production of Pult is just right up there, and he's taking quite a significant lead in the supply count. The robotics bay is on the way as well somewhere. Exactly where is... There we go. So Colossus Tech is coming out, and Observer is coming out as well. So that'll give Iki that essential scouting information he needs. Meanwhile, another command center coming down here. This will probably be made into a planetary fortress just to defend this area from any small engagements. Meanwhile, Pold looking like he's gearing up for another assault. This fourth base is trying to go down for Iki, but I mean, three, two are on the way for Pold. Meanwhile, plus three armor is about to finish up for Iki, and he obviously does have plus two attack as well. So we'll momentarily have an upgrade advantage, getting plus three weapons as well. And Pold just not going to go for it quite yet. He's going to pull back, and I think that's really, really a good move. He's got one marine up here scouting there. Obviously, he's still got this scouting factory here, so he knows exactly what's going on. And this command center is going to move down and take this position. There's another command center by Pole being built up here. So, Pole expanding like crazy. And all he's got to do is take out this basis of Iki. Getting a drop going off as well. Now, those High Templar are going to try and morph into an Archon. Are going to take some damage. And I don't think it'll actually quite get up. And meanwhile, while this is all going on, a gateway will go down. That Archon is going to go down pretty quickly as well. Iki is now supply blocked temporarily and an engagement coming down here. Obviously the drop is still going off in the main but this is where most of the action is happening. Pold is in a great position. Some huge storms do manage to go off but that fourth base is going to get denied. That is absolutely huge. Iki is now one base behind already and is about to be two bases behind as well. Trying to morph in some Archons because Pold is just crushing that army and the Archons are going to go down nearly instantly. Meanwhile, the drop in the main has done big damage, taking out quite a few gateways straight away. And if you look at the supply count, it says it all, really. Pult, uh, 50, well, now just about 50 food ahead. And just the supply is going crazy. A Thermal Lance is coming out. There is one Colossus there. So that should be able to clean this up with the Archon support, but needs to be careful not to lose that Colossus. If that goes down, he's got major problems, and it, it does fall. So although that will get cleaned up, look at this push coming in the front from Pult as well. Focusing down that robotic facility, which will prevent any more Colossus coming out. And Iki is not in a good spot here at all. He's got hardly any units. He's 70 food behind. 
And really, I think this is pretty much all over now. I don't know what EQG could do. Holt just doing amazing micro with those units there. Just putting them back, taking minimal losses, and just cleaning it up so, so well. This is absolutely great play. I mean, Iki will manage to take out this army just because it's so small, but not before it does significant damage. Plus three infantry weapons about to finish up for Polt as well. Plus three infantry armor is about half done as well. Meanwhile, Iki's not in a good spot, and that now fifth base is down for Polt. He's even building another command center as well, so going to be taking a sixth base. There's two command centers here, morphing them into orbital commands even, not even going for any form of kind of planetary fortress in order to defend. He's in such a strong position, maximum economy. And now Polt is moving in, and look at the supply count difference. Those zealots are getting absolutely slaughtered, obviously. Plus three weapon attack is now done. Those High Templar are going to fall down really quickly. There are ghosts in the mix as well, so a couple of good EMPs clearly went off there. The fourth base for Iki is trying to go down. He's nearly mined out at his natural base as well, so that really will leave him on one mining base. All the probes being pulled, all the zealots, an EMP does go off there, I believe I saw, and there is the GG, well played. So an absolutely fantastic game. Pulch showing really how he is such a good player at the moment. Great expansions, and Iki likewise. Just putting up a good fight, but didn't quite manage to do it. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoy, please follow me on Twitter and subscribe to my YouTube. And just a quick reminder, go and check out GameReplays.org. Thank you very much for watching. Catch you all again.